Enjoy this narrated virtual tour of fighter aircraft displayed at the National Museum of the United States Air Force located on the Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Southwest Ohio. See the aeronautical progression that resulted in today's United States Air Force's ability to control the sky in hostile environments. It opens with the post-World War II Lockheed F-80 Shooting Star, when the Air Force changed the designation from pursuit to fighter, and covers other aircraft through the Lockheed Martin F-22 Raptor. The Lockheed F-80 Shooting Star was the first American aircraft to exceed 500 miles per hour in level flight and the first U.S. Air Force jet used in combat. It was also a first-generation fighter aircraft as defined by Air and Space Forces magazine. Although designed as a high-altitude interceptor, the F-80 flew as a day fighter, fighter, bomber and photo reconnaissance aircraft during the Korean War. On November 8, 1950, a shooting star shot down a Russian-built MiG-15 in the world's first all-jet fighter air battle. The F-80C on display is one of the few remaining shooting stars that flew combat missions during the Korean War. It is painted as it was in 1950 while assigned to the 8th Fighter Bomber Group. The North American F-82 Twin Mustang was the last propeller-driven fighter acquired in quantity by the Air Force. It appears to be two P-51 Mustang fuselages on one wing, but in reality it was a totally new design. The twin Mustang carried a pilot and co-pilot navigator to reduce fatigue on long-range bomber escort missions. F-82 shot down the first three North Korean aircraft destroyed by U.S. forces. The F-82B on display, Betty Jo, flew from Hawaii to New York in 1947, a distance of 5,051 miles, the longest non-stop flight ever made by a propeller-driven fighter. The Republic F-84 Thunderjet, the first U.S. tactical bomber, gained renown during the Korean War. While it was initially sent to escort B-29s on long-range missions over North Korea, the Thunderjet excelled as a close air support and daytime interdiction strike aircraft. In Korea, F-84 pilots attacked enemy railroads, dams, bridges, supply depots and troop concentrations with bombs, rockets and napalm. This F-84E is marked to represent the F-84G flown by Colonel Joseph Davis Jr., commander of the 58th Fighter Bomber Wing in 1953. The swept-wing Republic F-84F Thunderstreak evolved from the straight-wing F-84 Thunderjet. The F-84 designation was retained because the fighter was expected to be a low-cost improvement of the straight-wing Thunderjet. Ongoing engine failures resulted in the entire fleet being grounded in early 1955. In 1961, increased tensions in Germany associated with the Berlin Wall's construction resulted in reactivation of the Thunderstreak fleet. It was retired from active Air Force service in 1964 and was replaced by the North American F-100 Super Sabre. The Republic RF-84K Thunder Flash was a reconnaissance fighter carried toward a target as a parasite by the GRB-36 bomber. At the time, jet aircraft possessed relatively short range and aerial refueling was not yet proven, so this provided a method to extend their range. It entered service in 1955 and for the next year, pilots successfully flew their RF-84Ks, but they experienced many near disasters while separating or hooking back up to the carrier aircraft. By 1957, the development of more capable strategic reconnaissance aircraft, along with greater range provided by dependable aerial refueling, made the parasite aircraft concept obsolete. The museum's aircraft is marked as it appeared while serving in the mid-1950s. The North American F-86 Sabre, identified by Air and Space Forces magazine as the first U.S. Gen 2 fighter, was the Air Force's first swept-wing jet fighter. It saw service in Korea as a day fighter and was the primary opponent of the Russian-built MiG-15. By the end of hostilities, Sabre pilots shot down 792 MiGs with a kill ratio of about 8 to 1. More than 5,500 F-86 day fighters were built in the U.S. and Canada. It is marked as the 4th Fighter Group F-86A flown by Lt. Col. Bruce Hinton on December 17, 1950, when he became the first F-86 pilot to shoot down a MiG. An intelligence warning in 1948 prompted the U.S. Air Force to hurriedly develop an all-weather interceptor. Initially designated the F-95, 
the North American F-86D Sabre started with the basic airframe of the F-86A. North American incorporated two unprecedented concepts into the F-86D. A highly sophisticated electronic system replaced the second crew member in the F-86D became the first production single-seat fighter with air-to-air missiles replacing the classic gun armament. The interception radar and fire control system computed the target's position, guided the aircraft on an intercept course, lowered the retractable tray of 24 rockets, and automatically fired the rockets. Although the U.S. Air Force had phased out the F-86D by June 1961, Japan and other nations continued flying them. The aircraft on display is marked as an F-86D assigned to the 97th Fighter Interceptor Squadron at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio during the mid-1950s. The North American RF-86F filled an important gap until more capable reconnaissance aircraft became available. The Sabre, originally built as a day fighter, was first modified for reconnaissance during the Korean War. After the Korean War, a handful of F-86Fs received more capable cameras. Under Project Haymaker, the aircraft acquired a distinctive bulge in both sides of the forward fuselage to include the film magazines for the vertically mounted cameras. Since the armament was removed to allow for the cameras, haymakers had gun ports painted to appear as if they were armed. Eight newly modified haymakers secretly overflew Soviet North Korean and Communist Chinese territories in the mid-1950s. The RF-86F haymaker on display is marked as it appeared when assigned to the 15th Tactical Reconnaissance Squadron. Northrop designed the F-89 as an all-weather fighter interceptor for the Air Defense Command. With a radar operator in the rear seat guiding the pilot, the Scorpion could locate, intercept and destroy enemy aircraft by day or night under all types of weather conditions. On July 19, 1957, an F-89J, a modified F-89D, fired a Genie test rocket with a nuclear warhead and it detonated over a Nevada test range. It marked the first launch of an air-to-air -air rocket with a nuclear warhead. Northrop converted 350 F-89Gs to J models, Air Defense Command's first fighter interceptor to carry nuclear armament. This aircraft was the last Scorpion in service with an operational unit. It is painted to represent an F-89J based at Ladd Air Force Base near Fairbanks, Alaska in the late 1950s and carries the Red Arctic insignia markings. Lockheed's F-94 Starfire was the first American all-weather jet interceptor to have an afterburner. The large radar in the nose permitted the observer in the rear seat to locate an enemy aircraft at night or in poor weather. The pilot then flew the Starfire into proper position for an attack based upon the observer's radar indications. During the 1950s, the Starfire operated primarily in the defense of the United States against Soviet bomber attacks, flying with Air Force and Air National Guard units. Starfires flew night, bomber escort and air defense missions from bases in Korea. The aircraft on display is painted to represent an F-94C assigned to the 60th Fighter Interceptor Squadron at Otis Air Force Base during the late 1950s. Developed as a follow-on to the F-86 Sabre used in the Korean War, the North American F-100 Super Sabre was the world's first production airplane capable of flying faster than the speed of sound in level flight. Also, the Air and Space Forces magazine listed as the first U.S. Gen 3 fighter. When Super Sabre units deployed to Southeast Asia, they included a mix of one- and two-seat F-100s and both types participated in traditional bombing missions in support of ground forces. As tactics developed, the two-seat F-100F became an important aircraft for two new missions. Surface-to-air missile suppression known as Iron Hand, and high-speed forward air control known as Misty Fac. Amid a relatively high attrition rate and the arrival of more advanced fighters, the Air Force opted to permanently withdraw its remaining F-100s during the early 1970s. This Super Sabre was a Misty Fac aircraft assigned to the 37th Tactical Fighter Wing at Phuket Air Base, Vietnam. Developed from the XF-88 Penetration Fighter the McDonald F-101 was originally designed as a long-range bomber escort for the Strategic Air Command. However, when high-speed, high-altitude jet bombers like the B-52 entered service, escort fighters were no longer needed. 
the F-101's design was changed to fill both tactical and air defense roles. In the reconnaissance versions, the Voodoo was the world's first supersonic photo reconnaissance aircraft. These RF-101s were used for low-altitude photo coverage of missile sites during the 1962 missile crisis and during the late 1960s in Southeast Asia. The F-101B on display served with the 18th Fighter Interceptor Squadron, Grand Forks Air Force Base and later the 142nd Fighter Interceptor Group, Oregon National Guard. The primary mission of the Convair F-102 Delta Dagger was to intercept and destroy enemy aircraft. It was the world's first supersonic all-weather jet interceptor in the U.S. Air Force's first operational Delta Wing aircraft. At the peak of deployment in the late 1950s, F-102s equipped more than 25 Air Defense Command squadrons. In a wartime situation, electronic equipment would locate enemy aircraft, the radar would guide it into attack position, at the proper moment the electronic fire control system would automatically fire air-to-air -air rockets and missiles. The F-102A on display served with the 57th Fighter Interceptor Squadron in Iceland. On various occasions, it encountered Soviet aircraft flying reconnaissance missions over the Arctic. Designed as a supersonic superiority fighter, the Lockheed F-104 Starfighter was produced in two major versions. Armed with a six-barrel M61 20mm Vulcan cannon, it served as a tactical fighter and when equipped with additional heat-seeking Sidewinder missiles, as a day-night interceptor. The Starfighter was the first aircraft to hold simultaneous official world records for speed, altitude and time to climb. The aircraft on display served with the U.S. Air Force in California, West Germany, Spain, Taiwan, Vietnam, and Thailand. Republic's F-105 Thunder Chiefs operated extensively in the Rolling Thunder Air Campaign against North Vietnam. Although designed as a nuclear strike aircraft, the Thunder Chief could carry over 12,000 pounds of conventional ordnance. The F-105 was gradually replaced by the F-4 Phantom and the Air Force withdrew them from service in July 1980. The aircraft on display is painted and marked as it appeared while serving in the 357th Tactical Fighter Squadron. The two red stars under the cockpit represent the two MiG kills it claimed during the Southeast Asia War. The Republic F-105 Wild Weasel flew combat missions from its base in Thailand for nearly three years. It formed the backbone of U.S. SAM suppression during Operation Rolling Thunder. The F-105 Wild Weasels continued to develop tactics, flying two types of missions, strike support, by far the more common of the two, and hunter-killer search and destroy attacks. In 1970, it was fitted with electronic countermeasure equipment and was assigned to wild weasel duty attacking enemy surface-to-air missile sites. As North Vietnamese defenses strengthened, the thud wild weasels became essential for high-threat strikes up north. During this time, it became one of only a few Air Force aircraft to claim three MiG kills. The Convair F-106 Delta Dart was the primary all-weather interceptor aircraft of the Air Force through much of the Cold War era. It ended up being the final specialist interceptor to be used by the service to date. It first flew in December 1956 and deliveries began in July 1959. The Delta Dart was designed without a gun or provision for carrying bombs, instead carrying its AIM-4 Falcon air-to-air -air missiles within an internal weapons bay, its clean exterior was beneficial to supersonic flight. The F-106 used the Hughes MA-1 electronic guidance and fire control system. After takeoff, the MA-1 would fly the aircraft to its proper attack position, fire the Genie and Falcon missiles, break off the attack run, and return the aircraft to the vicinity of its base. The aircraft on display was involved in an unusual incident during a training mission. It suddenly entered an uncontrollable flat spin, forcing the pilot to eject. Unpiloted, the aircraft recovered on its own and made a gentle belly landing in a snow-covered field. The General Dynamics F-111 Aardvark was a long-range all-weather strike aircraft capable of navigating at low altitudes to destroy targets deep in enemy territory. It entered the U.S. Air Force inventory in 1967 with the fighter version retired in 1996. The Electronic Warfare EF-111A served until 1998. Primarily a bomber, 
the Aardvark featured a sweep wing varying between 16 and 72.5 degrees and had side-by-side -side seating for the pilot and the weapon systems officer. The F-111's wings are straight for takeoffs, landings or slow speed flight. With wings swept fully back, it could exceed twice the speed of sound. The F-111F was one of the most effective Allied aircraft in Operation Desert Storm, flying more than 2,400 sorties against Iraqi strategic sites, vehicle formations and hardened bunkers. The F-111F on display flew in combat with the 48th Tactical Fighter Wing in 1991 during Operation Desert Storm. By the 1970s, new materials and techniques allowed engineers to design an aircraft with radar evading or stealth qualities. The result was Lockheed's F-117A Nighthawk, the world's first operational stealth aircraft. The first F-117A flew on June 18, 1981 and the first F-117A unit achieved initial operating capability in October 1983. The Nighthawk first saw combat during Operation Just Cause on December 19, 1989, when two F-117As attacked military targets in Panama. It again went into action during Operations Desert Shield and Desert Storm in 1990 and 1991. Nighthawks flew 12,171 sorties, achieving an 80% mission success rate and suffering no losses or combat damage. The displayed aircraft is the second F-117A built and was specifically modified for systems testing. It is marked as it appeared during the test conducted by the Air Force Systems Command between 1981 and 1991. The McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantom II was originally developed for U.S. Navy Fleet Defense. Air Force F-4C's production deliveries began in November 1963. In 1965 the Air Force sent its first Phantom IIs to Southeast Asia, where they flew air-to-air -air missions against North Vietnamese fighters as well as attacking ground targets. In its air-to-ground role, the F-4C could carry twice the normal load of a World War II B-17. The armament loaded on the aircraft on display is a typical configuration for an F-4C in 1967. It consists of four AIM-7E and four AIM-9B air-to-air missiles, and eight 750-pound MK-117 bombs. The aircraft on display is the one in which Colonel Olds, the pilot, and Lieutenant Stephen Croker, the weapons system officer, destroyed two MiG-17s in a single day. F-4G Wild Weasels were modified F-4E fighters with their cannon replaced by electronic warfare equipment. The Wild Weasel carried a pilot and an electronic warfare officer who navigated, assisted with communications, and coordinated attacks on SAM sites. Their mission was to attack enemy air defenses, including surface-to-air missiles and air defense radars. 116 F-4s were rebuilt as F-4Gs for this special purpose carrying AGM-88 high-speed anti-radiation missiles. The Wild Weasels worked in concert with other F-4Gs or as a hunter aircraft directing fighter bombers such as the F-16 against SAM site. The Wild Weasel first flew in 1975 and was retired in 1996. They launched more than 40 missiles during Operation Desert Storm from January 17 to February 28, 1991. The RF-4C development program began in 1962 and the first production aircraft made its initial flight in 1964. It can carry a variety of cameras in three different stations in its nose section. It could take photos at both high and low altitude, day or night. They carried no offensive armament, although during the last few years of its service some were fitted with four Sidewinder missiles for defense. RF-4Cs deployed to Southeast Asia to provide photographic reconnaissance of the growing conflict in South Vietnam. In the following years, they flew reconnaissance missions around the world, including Desert Shield and Desert Storm in Iraq. In 1990 and 91, the Air Force retired all of its RF-4Cs. During Desert Shield and Desert Storm, this aircraft flew a total of 172 missions, more than any other F-4 aircraft. McDonald's F-15 Eagle is a Gen 4 high-performance all-weather air superiority fighter that entered U.S. Air Force service in 1974. It was the first U.S. fighter with engine thrust greater than its basic weight, allowing it to accelerate while in a vertical climb. The Eagle was produced in single and two-seat versions. 
The two-seat F-15 E-Strike Eagle is a dual-role fighter that can engage both ground and air targets. The F-15 C, D and E models participated in Operation Desert Storm in 1991. Eagles accounted for 32 of 36 U.S. Air Force air-to-air -air victories and also attacked Iraqi ground forces. F-15s also served in Bosnia, downing three Serbian MiG-29 fighters in Operation Allied Force and enforced no-fly zones over Iraq in the 90s. Eagles also hit Afghan targets in Operation Enduring Freedom and the F-15E version performed air-to-ground operations in Operation Iraqi Freedom. The F-15A on display served at the 27th Tactical Fighter Squadron's 1st Tactical Fighter Wing at Langley Air Force Base and is painted in the colors of that squadron. The General Dynamics F-16 Fighting Falcon evolved from a 1972 U.S. Air Force lightweight fighter prototype program. It achieved combat-ready status in October 1980. This aircraft was one of the first F-16s to fly with the Thunderbirds. The Thunderbirds continued to fly it until 1992, when they converted to F-16Cs. It was then modified to operational condition and assigned to the Air Education and Training Command to train pilots at Luke Air Force Base. The YF-23A competed against the YF-22A in the Advanced Tactical Fighter Program. In 1991, after extensive flight testing, the Air Force announced that the Lockheed YF-22A won the airframe competition, ending the YF-23 program. Lockheed Martin's F-22A Raptor is the world's first stealthy air dominance and the U.S. first Gen 5 fighter. The Raptor combines stealth, maneuverability and long-distance supersonic flight ability or super cruise and performance of air superiority and air-to-ground missions. Furthermore, it requires less maintenance than older fighters. From the very beginning, the F-22A exceeded the U.S. Air Force's expectations and during exercises it proved to be more than a match to opposing fighters. During the highly realistic exercise Northern Edge 2006, the F-22 proved itself against as many as 40 enemy aircraft during simulated battles. Raptor pilots achieved a 108 to 0 kill ratio against the best F-15, F-16 and F-18 adversaries. The stealthy F-22 also proved that it could avoid and destroy enemy surface-to-air missiles. The aircraft on display was one of nine F-22s built for engineering manufacture and development testing. It is painted to represent an F-22A flown by the 1st Fighter Wing at Langley Air Force Base. I hope you enjoyed this tour of the Air Force Museum's fighter aircraft. If you would like to tour other aircraft in this series, you will find convenient links in the description section below this video. Here are YouTube suggested links on a similar topic that you may enjoy viewing.